I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're speaking with a wonderful author. Her name is Linda Agnew, and she has a powerful book that is available for you. It is called Unanswered Prayer. What do you do when God is silent? 30-day devotional. Linda explores the challenging phases of waiting for God's response. This book offers a beacon of hope for anyone who has felt the weight of unanswered prayers, providing a pathway of understanding and patience in the silence of waiting. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her insightful book. The links are below this interview. Linda, great to see you here today on Spotlight. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. What inspired you to write about unanswered prayers? Unanswered prayers. Many, many years of unanswered prayers. So I just kind of sat down. I had established a routine years ago of devotion in the morning. So I sat down one day and I just started writing. But I would write one day at a time. So I started numbering the days. So that's how the devotional came about. It sounds so, great. Tell us. I didn't set out. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I said I didn't set out to write a devotional. Right. It just came it just together. kind of took on its own life once it you started did. writing, which a lot of writing does, of course. Tell us how your devotional guide helps those who are struggling with silence from God. Okay. Silence from God is, I liken it to being very, very loud. Even though it's silence, it's very, very loud in your life. It's like it's always there on your shoulder telling you, you don't have an answer. You don't have an answer. Your friends are doing this, but your prayers are not answered. You don't have an answer to this. Everything's still the same. I liken it to that. So I wanted to give people, I can't say pray this way and all of your prayers will be answered, but I wanted people to know you're not alone. There are many of us who have unanswered prayers, and it's not a year, it's not two years, it could be decades, and that prayer, the, from the first time you prayed it to the very day that's been decades, is still important to you, Yeah, you know, and you just need some help to just say, okay, I can go one more day, I can wait one more day, and that's what the book is all about, just hope for somebody that feels like they're alone. Do you think eventually all prayers are answered? We just don't understand the time frame and reasons uh, for God's response or lack of response or? I think if, I think he answers them in sometimes in ways that we don't understand and mm -hmm. ways that we don't see. But I think that eventually if on this side of heaven or in heaven, he'll, he'll let us know the reason, you know, because some things are not in God's will, you know, and he says he will give you everything in what that is in his will, you know, mm -hmm. but we have to just accept that. But I think in my book, I said, even if he doesn't answer and you get a no, I ask God to take away the heaviness and the sorrow associated with not having the answer to mm -hmm. that prayer so that I can continue. That's good so. advice for sure, because you need strength during that time while you're waiting and perhaps suffering, as you mentioned. Let's give the folks at home an overview of the book, what they will find between the covers of this wonderful book. Okay, I start out with set your day, because like I said, I now have a daily devotional that I do every morning before I go anywhere. Even I don't work now, I'm a retired special mm -hmm. education teacher. So even before I retired, I had a routine of that. And mm -hmm. I call it set your day, you know? So don't look don't get up and focus on everything that you have to do take a moment for yourself you know and just kind of settle yourself put yourself in a good mood and just maybe read a scripture if you're not you know i'm not big on reading that's fine take five minutes you know 35 minutes a week you did 35 minutes more than you did last week but it's something that's going to help you you know throughout your day and it just might be the one word or the one scripture that says okay I can settle down and I can focus. So it's always important to start your day focused on you, on God, and just take a minute and just let him kind of direct your path. And then I talk about, you know, we get, we get to the point that, you know, I'm going to fix this. I know exactly what to do. And I talk about Sarah and I talk about Abraham. So, you know, with Sarah and Abraham, 
it was a lot of years before they had their son, Isaac. And but in between, Sarah says, go sleep with Hagar, mm -hmm. you know, and she did. And it caused all kind of problems. You know, I even say, well, look what happens when we help God out. You know, they thought they had a solution, but they really didn't. So sometimes impatience gets us in trouble and we try to go our own way. So I talk about that. And then I just talk about, you know, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. Now what? Mm. Everything aligns with the word of God. Now what? Mm. You know, and, I, and I'm just very honest. That's the hardest part mm. is to say, I've done everything that I can do. Now what? Yeah. And it's, it's called do not give up yeah. ever because today could be your day for your prayer to be answered. Absolutely. And like you said, you it might be answered and you don't even realize it. The answer might be there and you're just uh, misconstruing his intention um, right. and the meaning of the event as well. Right. In the book, you also talk about joy of his blessings during the wait. Tell us a little right. bit about that. It's just remembering the things that God has done for you. Because sometimes if you remember, oh, when I was in this position, Oh, he made a way. When this happened, I got out of it. When this happened, I did this. And it was just like, you know, remember the things that God has done for you, and it will get you to the next thing that you need to get through. Yeah. So that's absolutely what that's about. Mm -hmm. basically count your blessings, right? Count your blessings. What you have, look at what you have and what you not at what you don't have. Right. Um, yeah. That's very important, especially because we can get so down. Yeah. And so, so hard on ourselves and so disappointed. It's just, you know, just be careful not to go there. And we all go there. I go there. You go there. Everybody yeah. goes there because it just sometimes it's just so hard. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's I just want to tell somebody just hang on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, that ho that help is coming. Basically, that's it. Coming. That hope is there. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your spiritual journey. Well, I was saved when I was 12. Mm -hmm. and in a little country church in Florence, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And then I grew up and then in my 20s, I moved to Jacksonville, Florida. And then I became really grown mm -hmm. and I didn't go to church for a lot of years. So I was really, really grown then. So, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, everything starts falling apart, you know, on me. So I, I remember calling my sister, I said, you know what? I'm going back to church. Mm -hmm. My life shouldn't be this hard because I had stopped going to church because I saw people being blessed Mm -hmm. getting what they wanted. And I'm sitting there, I'm getting none of that. And I'm mm -hmm. doing this and I'm doing that, what I'm doing this. And I say, you know what? I'm gonna do what I wanna do. And I did. And in the book I talk yeah. about, you know, we always say there's a co-pilot, you know, God's my co-pilot. And I said, don't get it twisted. God yeah. is never the co-pilot. You know, cause when something goes wrong, guess what happens when you're in a plane? They're not talking to the co-pilot. Right. They're talking to the pilot. Yeah. So I said, that's, I said, that's what you got to understand, even though you think you're in control. And I thought I was, everything was wonderful for a long time. And then it was like, oh my gosh. So yeah. I needed to get back to my roots and I did. And then I got into some very good churches, very, very, um, very good teachers that would sit down and teach you the word. And I'm one of those people. I like to know what the Greek says or what the, uh, the Hebrew says. I like to look up all of that mm -hmm. just to see what it says. So I had some really good teachers in Jacksonville that did that. And I'm under a really good teacher here in, in Huntsville. So mm -hmm. that has helped because once you understand the word of God, you'll start applying it more to your life. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to get to a point to do because then I was just, you know, now I'm fine. You know, yeah. even though I got a lot of unanswered prayers, you know, but mm -hmm. I'm much better because now I can say, OK, and I can count the blessings and I can hold on, you know, yeah. and then even when I get down, I can still go back to the word and say, OK, God, you did say this and I keep waiting. Yeah, it sounds like going back to church was a pivotal time for you. It really put you back on the right path in rebuilding that relationship yes. with God, right? Yes, it really did. And the thing, the funny thing is I went back on Easter mm. <laughs> and my sister-in-law was like, everybody goes to church. I said, but <laughs> I kept going, right? you know, because I just had to get to a point. I think I just had to have a reason to go. 
yeah. back, you know, and then it's God is always going to welcome you, but you just feel so bad that you've done so many things. And now, right. you know, that was my reason to go back. Okay, I'm going back on Easter, but I never stopped from that point. And that's been probably more than 30 years ago. Well, that's perfect because so. Easter, of course, celebrates the resurrection and you were yes. resurrecting your spiritual life as well. So it was very fitting and it doesn't matter when you go back, as long as you do go back. I think that's exactly. the point, right? Mm -hmm. that is the the exactly. name of the book is Unanswered Prayer. What do you do when God is silent? 30-day devotional. It's written by Linda Agnew. It's a powerful book that explores the challenging phases of waiting for God's response. The book is a beacon of hope for anyone who has felt the weight of unanswered prayers. Linda, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. I appreciate your thank time. You. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, on Spotlight.